Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. So it's been about a month now since I brought this Bridgeport in here and I posted that, let's call it announcement video that hey, I got this thing and I am ready to spend some time with it, kind of clean things up and get it uh, just a little nicer. When I bought this thing, I was looking through it and functionally it looks like it's in pretty good shape. It just has had a pretty dirty life. It's not been cleaned probably in a long time and being in a wood shop and just being someone that likes to have you know cleaner stuff I just want to get this thing to the point where when I brush up against it I don't get dirty that's essentially where I'm kind of going with this and just a little bit of a framework for this video it's probably going to end up being a few videos not really sure how much I'm going to get done in this video and I'm not really sure how long it's all going to take me so this may end up being uh, spanned over you know, a few weeks or something but it'll all be like continuous in the video at least. So if you see me changing clothes and whatnot, that's why. One of the other things that's gonna be happening down the road is down here on the table. So I do have these power feeds on the X and the Y. They're not working, so we'll be looking at those as well. And I wasn't actually planning on pulling the table or the, the saddle off of here, but I think it's gonna be interesting to see how all this works down in here. And while I'm at it, I might as well pull them off and clean them and we can kind of take a further look on the inside, see how everything looks in there. And lastly, a little bit of a catch up from last time, I was able to use the drum switches on here as a control switch for the VFD, so now that actually works just fine, which is nice. So, let's, uh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so thinking of a plan of attack for this, a lot of this is just gonna be degreasing and cleanup, and for that, we want to work top down. It's like if you're washing your car. But I do have a lot of stuff here on the table that needs to get cleaned up as well. And I kind of want to get them out of the way. So I think first we're going to clean up the stuff that's on the table. So I have a couple of tubs of tooling as well as the collets, which needs some cleanup. The setup kit needs some cleanup. This vice needs some cleanup. The parallel kit needs some cleanup. So we're going to do a little bit of degreasing and stuff to clean all the stuff up. And then we'll get into actually cleaning up the actual machine. <laughs> So I think I'm going to start with the vise because that's uh, kind of big and looks like it would be pretty interesting. So here's my little test piece that I was practicing drilling spaced holes in. <laughs> Parallels out here. So I think uh, what I'll do here is I'll pop this top half off and uh, work on that separately from the swivel base. I don't know who tightened these things down. Wow. Excessive. <laughs> well, that's a lot of a lot of junk in there, huh? Yeah. Right, I've got this vice jaw off. Maybe. <laughs> we need a cheater bar for this. <laughs> nope. Okay. Not so much. Thrust bearing. We get the fixed jaw off. Take these uh, two socket head cap screws out. Ooh, that is uh, gross. Yeah, it's a little dirty. Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> oh. That's heavy. 
It's <clears throat> uh, it's got a lot of stuff on it too. Ugh. And then here I'm just pulling off the. It's just like the inner race or outer race of that bearing. So that's the thrust bearing right here. And the other side of that's stuck in there somehow. So we'll deal with that a little bit. Ugh. Washing time. Time to make some degreaser soup. <laughs> so this is just some warm water. I'll put some degreaser in here with the water. So this is gonna be pretty gross pretty quick, I think. Yeah, that's pretty good. Give that a couple minutes. It's already. <laughs> it's working. All right, a little scrub brush here. Give this thing a little quick little scrub down. Oh, a couple more pieces. Got a couple of washers and a set screw. Okay. That's good. It's heavy. Crazy what a little bit of cleanup will do. This is a pretty good example of the before compared to the after. And this thing is so full of junk and stuff. I think what I'll do for this one is just use the tub that I've already been using. It's pretty dirty right now. And just give this one a sort of pre-rinse in the dirty water. <laughs> and then I can switch the water up for some new stuff with some new degreaser and kind of go from there. The other thing is that this, uh, this base is gonna be too big for a little wash tub. So that's going to get a little more interesting as well. So I ended up bringing this one inside so I could use the laundry tub to wash this. It was getting kind of annoying to try and get that wash in the tub here. But this thing is all cleaned up nicely. But I have to say, like, this is definitely one of those cheap vices. The casting on this thing leads a lot to be desired. Like, there's, like, voids in the casting and there's... It's not really cleaned up that nicely. I mean, the areas that are machined are machined, but it's just kind of junky, uh, especially on the slide mechanism. You can see how like potty that is. This is all like voids in the casting. That whole corner is missing in the casting. So this is not a very good vice. So I don't know. It's probably fine for me to kind of learn on and practice on, but I think uh, I'll be uh, getting a nice vice at some point in the future. So on the machined areas, I'm just going to hit those with some bow shield to keep those from rusting. I'm not sure. I might paint this base. Might make it look a little bit nicer. I'm not too worried about it though. So I'm going to go around and just put a light coat of bow shield on all of the machine surfaces. And this thing should be pretty well cleaned up. And I can work on the, uh, the pivot base next, which I probably just bring inside because it's also pretty big. So there's the swivel base. That's a lot better. The underside here has a few spots where there are some burrs. Looks like maybe it was dropped or something. So I'm gonna knock off these burrs so this thing actually sits nice and flush on the table and doesn't end up scratching up my table. <laughs> so I have decided to actually paint this. So I went ahead and masked off any of the machined areas, the little oil hole there. And then anywhere that the paint was loose, I knocked off any more that might fall off and it's kind of blended things in with an angle grinder so that the paint will be kind of even instead of being stepped where the paint was all chipped off. So I'll start off with the base and I also have the sliding block part as well as the swivel base to paint as well. I'll hit it with some primer and then I've got some sweet <laughs> implement red that I can uh, top coat this thing with. It's 
let's start getting this vise back together. So I washed the bearing, so it should be a little bit cleaner, although this is, is this what's on here? There we go. There we go. Cage. kind of have a feeling like this is not going to be fun to put back. <laughs> so oops, we'll see how this goes without, you know, spilling the balls everywhere. Okay. I'm thinking if I put it in with the vice standing up, then I won't spill the balls. There. Kind of worked. Sweet. Nice. Very nice. So now we got a vice, I guess. Oh boy. Oh, we need a pivot vent. Oh boy. Ugh. Wow, okay. This vice is heavy. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's quite nice. Yeah. That's a vice. Cool. So here's the first bin of end mills and other sort of tooling. The items in the little tubes here are still new, so I think with these ones I'll just wipe off the tubes and get them cleaned up, but they still have some brand new end mills in them, so I'll set these guys aside. A lot of these things look like they're going to be pretty well dull, and I know people have said that you can get them sharpened. I just haven't really looked into seeing at what point it's worth sharpening these things and at what point they're just kind of disposable. I highly doubt that having one of these little tiny ones sharpened is going to be you know, all of that uh, advantageous. There's some weird stuff in here like this, which looks like it's the end of like an impact wrench. I don't know. So I'm just gonna get these things soaking in some degreaser. So I've got some warm water in a wash tub, put a little degreaser in there. I'll probably let them soak for a while and then give them a little scrub and we'll see if there's anything that's uh, things good in there. I think these bigger cutters are probably worth Having them resharpen and reground, but they're in pretty bad shape. I don't know what that is. Like this is a uh, 16th inch cutter with the top snapped off, so I'll, that's uh, that's not going to be all that useful. Got one drill. This is a inch and three eighths. Look how much stuff's on these things. It's just like all full of crud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a dovetail cutter. Yeah, yeah. Start milling dovetails. So they're all in there now. Let's let them soak for a while. Also, looks like I have some inserts. So that's cool. I'll just toss those in there as well. It looks like a lot of the stuff still has some life left in it, which is a really good sign. Some of it is definitely pretty far gone, but at least there's a few little 
things here and there that I won't have to buy. So next up is this bin of larger end mills as well as the collets which are kind of grimy. So there's some pretty big tooling in here which will look good and cleaned up. And a lot of these collets will be a little bit nicer looking too once they're a little cleaner. All right, let's throw some degreaser in here and everybody's going for a swim. Like this collet must have been sitting around collecting a uh, splatter and stuff for quite a number of years. The bin is definitely a lot cleaner than the uh, last one with all the small ones. Look at this thing. Uh, that's, that's an end mill. <laughs> that is huge. Everything's dull though. Everything's got to go in to be reground, but at least, uh, at least I have some tooling that can be reground. Yeah, these are uh, much larger compared to the last bin. So because I'm sure people will be curious as to how long I'm letting these things soak for, uh, they've been in there for about a minute right now. And this uh, schmutz just kind of wipes right off with the scrub brush at this point. So they do clean up pretty quickly, which is nice. So we got the vice all cleaned up. We have a couple of tubs of tooling and stuff. That's all cleaned up. I also cleaned up the setup kit. I didn't really show a whole lot of that. It's just, uh, you know, degreasing and cleanup, but this looks a lot nicer than it used to. I am, of course, missing some stuff, but I knew that before. But as far as getting going here, this is uh, plenty of stuff. There's also two more T-nuts that are already, they're still on the table. So missing a few studs. And I don't know what happened to the other, like, angle thing. I thought I had both of them, but maybe I did. I don't know. But I also did the parallels. Again, nothing crazy here. Just cleaning them up. This case is a lot uh, nicer. Touch the toucher. It's really nice. It's, wow, this case is a lot cleaner. And it feels better just to touch it. No, it's not all full of grime and crap. And then the parallels are clean up as well. There were a lot of chips and stuff in here. So that's all cleaned out as well. So that takes care of all of the accessories and things that were on the table. So those are all out of the way now. Now we can actually start on cleaning up the actual machine. So I do want to start on the head first, but looking at the table, it's, uh, it's kind of gross and I'd like this to be a little bit cleaner than it is right now. So I think before jumping into the head, I'm going to try and clean up the table a little bit, at least get some of the chips and junk out from the T-slots and uh, wipe down the top a little bit because it is pretty much just really gross and filthy at this point and it'd be nice to have a little bit of a cleaner area to work. So I have a crevice tool for the vacuum so I'm going to try and pull out as much of the chips that way with the vacuum. Kind of wish I had a T-slot scraper at this point but hey we'll make do. <laughs> there is so much crap in here. So at least that's a, a little bit better for now. Still a lot of junk down in here. What I think I'm going to do with the table is when we get to that I'll plug the drain holes on both sides. I'll just fill this thing with degreaser and it's kind of flush it out to get a lot of the big stuff out. But uh, you can see I did have some uh, damage on the table that was covered by the vise. I thought this was the only damaged spot. But there's a few little, little peck marks here from someone drilling through whatever. But the uh, table still looks like it's in pretty good shape. So I'm going to move on to the top here. And I think uh, I'm going to get this chuck out of here. And then we'll start cleaning up the head. And I think also to make it a little bit easier to get all the way around it, I'm going to try and pull this thing out from the wall a little bit. And hopefully, it should give me some more space to work. <laughs> yeah, I forgot how heavy this thing is. Although it is lighter than when I brought it in here because there's no vice sitting on there anymore. Ah, that's not too bad. Just got to be able to get behind it, that's all. That's better. Okay, so I think I'll get this DRO out of here. This needs to be, uh, I can use a little cleanup, it's a little dirty. So I think I'll give that a, a little wipe down here somewhere. I'll set that aside for now. And then I can deal with this shelf thing of bobber here. I'll take this thing off as well to clean it. And I think what I'm gonna do is actually drill a couple of holes in this uh, bar so I can kind of change the, uh, change how far away from the 
machinist thing is. This is a lot further out than I really need it to be. It could be a lot closer, and that'll just give me some more room off the side. So I have my little tub here. I think I'll just throw the parts as I pull them off in this tub and I can wash them all at once. Shouldn't have a problem with uh, knowing where things go. There's not a whole lot of hardware. And then any of this little stuff like the knobs and things that I can just pull off, I'll do that. I don't need to go super crazy with this, but if there's some small stuff here and there that I can pull off and wash separately, I'll do that. And that way it comes to wash behind stuff as well. Like these, I could probably pull out these locking pins one at a time and clean the side of there. Somehow there's chips and stuff inside of there, so I'll pull these out separately, wash them, and put them back in. This one's a little cleaner, still full of schmoo. So now, for example, with those locking bolts out of the way, now I can clean up in under here, which wasn't all that accessible with that bolt head there. So as I'm working around, I'll remove whatever I can. These are the locks for the whole uh, turret. So I'll probably pull these out one by one, clean each bolt and clean underneath them. But uh, I'm getting sidetracked because we gotta go up first. I wanna clean or at least wipe down the motor area of the head first. So it looks like it's, well, there's a bunch of belt crap in here. I wonder how hard it is to get inside of this. I think to do, this section here, it's going to be easier if I tip the head so at least you can see what's going on. It's not terrible, but it's kind of grungy up top here. And this motor cover could probably come off and clean it separately. So let me try and tip the head over once again. Okay. That should make things up here way more accessible. Okay, first thing to come off is this motor cap. I don't think it's ever been off. It's got these rubber anti-vibration mount things here, or washers, I guess. They are uh, sort of attached. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's plenty gross. Dirty. So while I'm up here, I'm also going to remove this cap piece for two reasons. One, it's going to be easier just to clean with it off, and I can clean kind of around it and underneath it. And it's also going to give us a look inside the head so we can take a look and see if, you know, how the, at least the top bearing looks and how things kind of look in there with the pulley assembly. Probably the biggest thing with restoration work, I guess, or cleanup work like this is like where you draw the line. Because <laughs> I really wasn't planning on taking this head apart or a whole lot of the stuff apart. Like you just start going at it and you're like, oh, I might as well take this apart and this too while I'm at it and how about this and Sooner or later, you got the whole thing taken apart. So, I'm trying to restrain myself a little bit with how far I can go with this. You know, I can pull the drawbar out. So I believe these are supposed to be jack screws. These other holes here. Let's see if we can pop this plate off first. I guess there's actually a couple of recessed areas on this plate for, I guess, uh, Get pry bar in. So that's kind of nice. There we go. So there's a bearing here. So from the top assembly, there's a top plate. There's your wavy preload washer thingy. There's the actual bearing, which uh, yeah, I'll just replace. It still spins just fine, but I'm here. Might as well buy a bearing. They're pretty cheap. And then this is the uh, the motor top plate thing. So I have those parts sitting in the laundry room in some degreaser, and this is a lot of dust and junk on this fan blade especially, so a little compressed air will get most of this cleaned off. Okay, now I can just uh, start cleaning, I guess. <laughs> Ooh, this might be a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a shop. So what if I get a little degreaser on the ceiling? So, you know, speaking of going down that rabbit hole of just pulling things apart, 
This is probably a good example of that. I wasn't really planning on pulling this fan off, but it looks like it should slide off the shaft, maybe? If this puller would stay attached. So I figure if I can pull this fan off, I can pull this little top cover off, and that should allow me to get at the actual fins of the motor, as well as clean this fan a lot better, and clean this little, I don't know, shroud, I guess? Shroud part? So close. Yeah. Yeah, you know, for just reaching in there and roughly cleaning it, I got a pretty good amount of the gunk out. For not being able to actually access anything, I think that's pretty good. Let me pull this top part off now. Ugh. It's gross. It's just kind of dirty in here. <laughs> So I think it's about as good as the inside of the motor is going to get. I don't want to go too crazy with spraying the greaser down in there, but at least it's a little better. I got rid of that ring that's around here, which is what I really cared about. So before I start putting things back, I have a clean rag here with some a little bit of the grease around there. I should get rid of any last little bit of surface grime that I was smearing around as I was uh, doing the heavy cleaning. As you can see, there's still some surface dirt on there. I think this electrical box could probably get clean at some point too. But that'll be an easy one to get to. And there's the, uh, the fan all cleaned up. Looks, uh, that looks pretty darn good. It looks like almost brand new. And that's the uh, shroud piece all cleaned up. It's gonna look uh, real nice. Forgot to clean these screws. So that's the before shot of the motor screws. I'm gonna go get these cleaned up. And there is the after. The rubber bits on here definitely have seen better days. A lot of stuff is kind of worn at this point, but it should be fine to just hold the motor on. There's still enough rubber there to serve as anti-vibration, but at least they're, uh, they're cleaner. So in the interest of like putting things back so I don't uh, lose them and just have fewer parts floating around, I'm going to put this uh, cap piece back on. There's no bearing installed in there and I've left out that uh, spring washer. Just fewer things floating around for now and I can put that new bearing in when I get it. At least I won't have uh, anything missing except for that spring washer. <laughs> which hopefully I won't lose. So I think while I have the head tipped like this, I'm just gonna see if I can get access in here. Let's see how dirty this thing is. Yeah, if I can get this whole thing off, I can clean it separately. Okay, I don't know about that one. <laughs> Is this there we go. Schmoo. <laughs> So this adjustment chain is held in here with a roll pin. I have no idea how to get that pin out because you can't drive it that way because it'll hit the gear. And obviously you can't drive it that way because there's no access hole. So I'm not really sure how they expect you to take that off. But uh, looking inside of the head, it doesn't look too bad. There is a little, uh, out of the way, a little, a little friend here, a little stowaway. I don't think he uh, did too well though. So I guess I'll clean out that uh, area there and see if I can figure out how to get this off because it has to clean this separate from the whole head because it is absolutely filthy. So we'll find out, I guess. I got this off though. I'm not really sure 
why this handle won't come off. I have a little bit of suspicion that there is a nut on the end of the shaft holding this handle on behind this label. Uh, so that might be something. We shall see, I guess. So it turns out there's no nut or anything on here. It's just a good spot for crap to collect and jam up. So that's all taken apart now. I can get cleaned up all nice. All right, I figured this out. You gotta tap the gear off backwards. Something like that. I have my gloves off, of course. There's our gear. It's a little plastic piece I want to clean. And then there's that little assembly. Eh. Eh. Nice. I feel like, uh, I don't know, I should like keep this or something. <laughs> that is one dirty wasp. <laughs> All right. So now I can start reattaching all this stuff together. This gear is a lot cleaner than it used to be. It had like years and years of old grease, like just hardened all over the teeth. So it should actually operate maybe a little smoother now than it did before, which will be pretty nice. And once I get this bolted back on here, I can re-grease the, uh, the worm gear at the bottom there. Some fresh grease on there. The other thing I learned is that the uh, degreaser I'm using is if it works a lot better when it's with some hot water, which I knew already, but it works a lot, lot better <laughs> when there's hot water. So good, in fact, that if you soak a part in it, it'll strip the paint off. So now this uh, housing cover thing is uh, no longer painted gray, but uh, at least it matches the top. <laughs> It's not a, a huge concern, but I thought that was pretty funny when I pulled it out of the, uh, the bucket after it had been soaking for a while. I'm like, what is all this stuff coming off of here? Why is all this, what's all this gray stuff? It must have been really greasy. Nope, that's just all the paint just got stripped right off. <laughs> it also took the, uh, the lettering off of the, the part that covers over here. It tells you to only operate it when it's uh, running. So that doesn't have a label on it anymore. That looks like uh, like this now. I took the lettering right off. <laughs> I could go crazy and buff this whole thing like Keith Fenner, but I think there's only enough room for one Buffy in this world. <laughs> Mine's gonna be a matty, matte finish. No? Please tell me somebody chuckled. Please? <laughs> Okay, a little grease for uh, our gear back here. There we go. I do want to put something up here because otherwise it's just open for junk to get down in there. So I think on the to-do list is to find some kind of like, I don't know, filter material or something just to fill that gap. Otherwise you just get junk floating in there. I'm also not super worried about the paint because this piece covers most of the uh, I don't know, this cover anyway. Cover covers a cover. <laughs> so you don't see most of it anyway. I get the dial back on here. And this one, this little sections should be good to go. Dial's clean. Although I need to reset it <laughs> to whatever uh, position this way, but I'll do that later. And let me throw this guy back up there. I'm just going to put this on loose for now because I'm going to have to change that dial to get it set correctly later. Maybe I'll repaint that someday. So now before I flip this head back up so I can get this area up here a little bit easier, I do want to work on some of the underside stuff because it's going to be a lot easier to do that now than when this thing is pivoted back up. And probably one of the dirtiest areas on the machine is the area right above the quill where all the cutting is done. So I have a whole lot of really crazy built up grime under here, under here. And this is gonna be easier to get to. Later on, I have the same situation under here, under the ram and around the turret area, which is also pretty much like baked on grease. So I wanna get some spray on here, get that soaking, 
and hopefully get a lot of that stuff off while it's uh, tipped up this way. So I think the easiest thing to do here is going to be to just sort of drape the areas in some wet towels soaked in degreaser, let that sit on for a while, and hopefully that'll help loosen things up so it just kind of wipes right off. But this stuff is uh, really, really, really stuck on there. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of working. A little better. I can get a little more though. So it looks like I'll be able to pop this cap off as well as this linkage later on. So I'm not too worried about this stuff. That's gonna be easier to clean off off the machine. And I'll probably remove this whole section up here to get in behind here. So all I'm really focusing on right now is just this gunk <laughs> right here. This stuff is uh, it's on there. Well, it is getting better. I can actually see stuff now. Like you wouldn't even know this is like a machine flange area down here. It's just like sandpaper. I feel like I'm wrapping like a mummy in some bandages or something. So that is a lot better than what it was. There's still a little bit of chips and goo stuck in up here, but as far as gunk on the end of the spindle and the end of the quill, it is a lot better. So I think with that all the way, I can pivot the head back to vertical again and then start working my way down each side. So luckily the uh, motor housing area is terribly dirty. So I'm just gonna give that a little wipe down here. And then we can move on to some of the more exciting stuff down in here. So I'm just gonna start stripping off any of the components I can on the side here just to make cleaning those off a lot easier. And uh, I don't know, clean them and put them back. <laughs> That's really it. Right. And while I'm at it, I'm going to pull off this, this little selector area. Just again, it'll be a lot easier to clean off the, the knob and right up to the plate if it's not attached to the machine. This is the down feed selector. So it uh, allows you to change how quickly the quill will feed itself in or down. So you have either uh, I think it's one and a half thou per revolution, three and six thou per revolution of the quill. So all this thing does is just uh, shift that thing around. So it just moves the gears up and down to select whatever one's going to be the right speed for what you want to do. So it's definitely one of the more goofy things to put back. You get everything like lined up apparently. The key in this shaft that comes out of the side of the head and then you got to get this over onto this pin. Oh, I got it, I think. Quick, get the screws in. <laughs> right, that's a little cleaner looking now. Although, I totally forgot I was going to take this part off, so I guess getting this thing in there right now wasn't a huge deal anyway, but oh well. The biggest possible adjustable wrench for the smallest possible nut. <laughs> so coming around this side, like this knob is accessible enough, it's not super dirty. We're kind of up high enough away from all of the crap now. So one of the areas I've been dreading is all this back here under the ram and around the turret here. This is all, that's all stuff that needs to get taken off. But I'm gonna start working on the face here of the head. And the first thing I'm gonna do is the easiest ones, which is to individually remove all of the locking nuts so I can wash those separately. And for this internal stuff like this, I'm not using any cleaner or degreaser or anything. I don't wanna get anything inside of the head. So this is just a dry paper towel just to kind of wipe off some of the excess grease and grime is in there. There we go. So that's uh, one locking nut and washer cleaned. And there's actually a bunch of gunk on the left side here. So I'll pop this scale off so it's out of the way. And I can clean up over here a little bit easier. And 
while I'm going crazy, I might as well try and pull the uh, quill stop off. See how that goes. Figure out how to do this. There's a snap ring here, and set the screw thing up here. Screw up here too? No. The pin up the top. So thank you, internet. This is actually threaded for a tiny little bolt. And it's a pin that you just pull out apparently. So that's supposed to give you a handle, I guess. So you just pull out. There it is. I got a snap ring down here. Okay. Alright, so that should give me access to everything to get it all cleaned up. This thing looks kind of weird without any stuff on the front, that's for sure. And it's pretty dirty though. So I've cleaned up all of these locking nuts as well as removed, I think, every component from the quill area. Get them all, to get them all cleaned up and ready to go. So with that locking bolt back on there, let me show you all the parts that go here somewhere so here are all the quill components all cleaned up and ready to go back on and since this is off i went ahead and got a quick stop uh depth stop adjustment thingamabobber so this one will actually slide down the threaded rod so you can adjust it really quickly and you can still spin it to fine tune it as opposed to the stock one which you have to turn all the way down this threaded rod in order to set your depth so that'll be a nice uh nice improvement over using the uh the stock one Okay, so now I can start putting the whole front face of the mill back together. So there is the quill lock back installed. Then I have this cross dowel which goes up in here. There's the quill stop. There's the kickover linkage. Got the threaded rod. You can see how this one just slides along here, but you can also spin it. So that's gonna be a lot nicer to use. This thingy in here. There we go. Here's the snap ring, which goes down here. Down underneath here we have the kickover linkage that goes in here like that. And there's this pin. Small detail, this little dog bone thing gets plugged. Now I can start working on this guy. And I'm pretty sure it's the only piece I misplaced, which was this other quarter 20 bolt, which goes over there. I'm sure it'll turn up. I think it might be still inside in the, uh, the laundry tub. And on one side of the shaft, there is a little keyway. On the opposite side, there's a little ball. It goes right in there. And then this whole thing should just slide on on this thing. There we go. Found that other cap screw, it was hiding in the table. And then the fine down feed 
hand wheel, and the quill area is back to normal. Now coming around to here, I did pull the oil cup as well as the wick, and that looks pretty good. So I just cleaned this up on the outside so it's not all goopy and gross. And I can reinstall this into the, uh, the head. So I did get the replacement bearing for the top assembly here. So that came in so I can install that new bearing up in here. Probably got to seat that, the mallet in a second. But I also got a replacement, uh, these little sign things that go on here since I took the, uh, the paint off of this guy so I can replace that as well. So that's uh, taken care of. That's the nice thing about these machines is parts are pretty easy to come by. They're very common and easy to get. All right, so let's take a look and see if this thing still works. <laughs> that's always a concern, right? Well, that's good news. Still works. Let's see if it stops. <laughs> this is this is good news. <laughs> Good, that still works too. Wonderful. So I think it's going to do it for this part. The head's looking a lot cleaner than it used to be. And the beautiful thing is that now if I touch it anywhere, uh, my hands aren't just like totally filthy and ridiculously dirty. So I'm really happy with the progress and I'm really happy that it all came back together. So hope you enjoyed following along on this little cleanup uh, excursion of mine. I know personally it's been really interesting to see how everything kind of works together and it gave me a lot more of a better understanding of how the head on the machine works and I'm sure it's going to continue as we progress further along. So next time we'll start getting into cleaning up the RAM and the column and then we'll get into the table. The column and the RAM should go pretty quickly because it's just a lot of open space. There's not a whole lot of little things to you know, take off and clean. So that should go pretty quickly and then we'll get into the tables and the table and it should be uh, a lot of fun so thank you as always for watching i greatly appreciate it if you have any questions or comments about anything uh in the cleanup video or anything here in my shop please feel free to leave me a comment as always i'll be happy to answer any questions you might have and until next time <laughs> happy woodworking